Thank you. 
Okay, everyone, beats on FB flat. Nice big long one. Beats on FB flat. <laughs> Two, two, one, two, hey, hey, one, two. So this is what you're going to have during the show, all right?
the ringing of the Hartwick Bell calls us together this day as it has for 216 years. Since 1797, those who have wanted to learn have come together with those who were prepared to teach under the name of Hartwick, in the same tradition that brings us together today. Over these years, thousands of students from across the world have found at Hartwick the inspiration that fuels their curiosity, creativity, and arouses their passion for learning. Students, this is where you built your self-confidence and your personal courage. This is where you deepened your understanding. Class of 2013, you have stepped in the Hartwick's river of time and changed the college's course forever. You are now prepared to join generations of Hartwick alumni who have stepped forward from this place to meet their future. Today, you are Hartwick College. And so I declare in the words with which we convene each commencement ceremony, the company of scholars is assembled. Let the ceremonies begin. <laughs> Please remain standing for the singing of the Star Spangled Banner, which today will be performed by the Hartwick College Wind Ensemble and Senior Marie Catherine Davison. <laughs> Along with her mother and sister, Beverly and Emily Davison. Student Senate President Mark Smith to the podium. President Dragovich, honored guest, my class of 2013, welcome. Our time spent at this institution, the three or four years that we have been blessed, has been simply magical. The best decision we have made besides coming to Hartwick, has been getting involved. Has been getting involved. My experience here 
has given me the opportunity to interact with just about each and every one of you. And because of this, I feel comfortable speaking on your behalf on this beautiful day. <laughs> it is an honor, to say the least. Today, I can't tell you why, three or four years ago, we decided on Hartwick. Honestly, I can't tell you why I decided on Hartwick. But what I can tell you is why we decided to stay. I can tell you why we were able to travel from our homes, travel across the country, across the world, or just from strong islands, and create a new home. I could tell you why we were able to look past the City of Hills, the College of Stairs, and be able to call Hartwick home. How is this possible? Because Hartwick provided us a community, the family, the experience, that we couldn't find anywhere else. The purpose of our Hartwick journey to pursue academics, excel in athletics, meet new people, and create friendships. Expand and, diver and diversify our understanding of the world, or simply to better understand ourselves. Whatever the reason, whichever you're calling, we were able to enter the community and quickly find our niche. For some of us, it was athletics. For the first time, we were no longer playing with our best or lifelong friends. A new team, a new coach, a new locker room, surrounded by many, yet feeling alone. But this feeling wouldn't last. The blood, the sweat, the tears, the injuries, the victories, the defeats. It wasn't too long ago that we took our first step on the field, jumped in the pool, walked on the court, or even hopped on that horse. Now, four years later, we've taken our last step off the field, hopped out of the pool, walked off the court, and jumped off of that horse. But we, what we are able to take away is priceless. We don't, we don't have new friends, we have new brothers, new sisters. Looking back at the first practice and feeling alone, now looking back at the last competition, grasping your brother, your sister, looking around and not a dry eye. For others, we found Greek life, making a decision, a lifelong commitment to a house you barely knew. The idea, the importance, the strength of brotherhood, sisterhood, was something at that moment we couldn't even fathom. Though we made the commitment, we took the pledge, we, th we thought it would never happen, but finally the greatest day of our lives, shirt night. Woo! <laughs> It seemed, it seemed like a blink of an eye, and then we found ourselves standing in front of our chapter with, for one of the saddest days of our lives, Senior Wills. Passing on our letters, our memories, and our legacies to our younger brothers and younger sisters. However, this community, this class, is much more than Greeks and athletes. We are scholars who strive for academic perfection, who spent countless hours in the library, the breakout room, the rumble room, and of course, Sleep was always optional. We pushed our limits, we freaked out, we stressed out, but in the end, it paid off. I commend all of you who today bear the cords, the medals that symbolize your dedication to your education and your academic excellence. Still, there is more to this class, the class of 2013, than what we did academically. I feel just as important as what we did inside the classroom, it's what we did outside of it. Whether it was Senate or Res Life, a club or organization, or just a group of friends, we did more than impact our community. We enhanced it. Starting as first years, it did not take long for us to become leaders, become the role models to show the underclassmen what it takes to be a Hartwood student. As RAs, we built communities. We reached out to our peers. We became the support for those who needed it. As senators, we were the voice of the students, doing our best to better Hartwood. We were peer leaders, orientation leaders, 50-50 counselors, hilltop writers, challenge educators. We were presidents, vice presidents, secretaries, and treasurers. It doesn't matter if we impacted the entire student potty or just one student. We helped build this community, this Hartwick community, that has given us so much. And whether you know it or not, we've given so much back. We should remember that none of this would be possible without the people who supported us, our parents, I love you, Mom. Our siblings, family, friends, everyone who provided mental, emotional, and of course, financial support. 
Speaking of support, also a special shout out to the nursing clan of 22, who has showed probably the greatest supporting group on this campus. Our professors, who didn't just consider us a number, but an individual. The professors who opened our eyes to the world around us, who influenced us beyond belief. Whether they did it by taking us to Arizona or Thailand, or by creating an engaging class that made us think, our professors truly cared about our academic success and pushed us along the way. The administrators, who will continue to move this institution forward, and a president who's making student success personal. At most colleges, students don't know their name and their presidents, but at Hartwick, she knows ours. Of course, the Board of Trustees and Friends of the College, whose generosity and ongoing support makes everything we have possible, including the scholarships which without would not make this journey possible. Why did we choose Hartwick? Still, I couldn't tell you. But why did we stay? Well, that's easy. These three or four years have been the most influential, beneficial, and fun years of our lives. While we certainly won't have another four years like this again, we will never forget our time on OER and Hill. Now, the question, what's next? The future is a scary place. The next step we take, a blinded leap, will be filled with uncertainty, filled with hardships and struggles. The purpose of our four three-year trek at this institution was to prepare us for the next step whether it is grad school or entrance to the real world. The next step will be the hardest, most demanding, and most challenging than anything we have ever, ever experienced thus far. For our entire lives, this is what we've been led to believe. The transition from middle to high school, high school to college, college to the real world, it seems like a broken record. Our next endeavor, we've been told, will be like nothing else we have ever experienced, and not for the better. This is something I've never understood. Instead of looking forward to the next chapter, we have been made to feel intimidated by it. Even our friends and siblings have painted us a picture, portraying a bleak after-college life. But why continue this trend? We, the class of 2013, are part of the Y generation. By definition, we are different than the generations we succeed significantly. We are not baby boomers. We are digital natives. With an infinite amount of information at our fingertips, and new technologies at our disposal. We have the resources to do more, to be better. We are not following traditional social norms, but we are creating new ones. We are not abiding by the long established markets, but revolutionizing them. We, unlike any generation that come before us, have more potential to be great and more resources to do so. But technology alone is not enough to break the trend. Utilizing these resources to amplify what we have learned inside and equally important outside the classroom is crucial and will allow us to push the threshold. But is this obtainable? We will be able to apply all these things and reach out and reach our potential? The answer, simply, yes. Our time on O'Yarn Hill will be the catalyst, the essential connecting piece, bringing together education and technology, propelling us forward. The knowledge we've gained, the friends we made, the community we are part of and strengthened are all things Hartwick that will make us the standout generation. As a class, as a generation, we have stayed on par, stride for stride, with the modern day technological explosion. Our growth is exponential, our ability to adapt is second to none, and our hunger, hunger for innovation is bottomless. It wasn't too long ago that we traded our POGs for Tamagotchis, MySpace for Facebook, flip phones for smartphones. As we grow, we demand the world around us to keep up. Generation Y is in the driver's seat, and we can't be tamed. We haven't even realized it yet, but our generation has already had a tremendous impact on society. Politically, socially, economically, we are setting the trends. And we've barely scratched the surface. But we cannot let the past dictate our future. We have never been followers, so why start now? We have never, nor will we ever, ever, settle and take the path society laid out for us. Rather, we're going to make our own. With that said, yes, the future is a scary place, but only for those who can't keep up. Thank you. It has been a pleasure. At this time, please allow me to introduce Diane Hettinger, Chairperson of the Hartwick College Board of Trustees.
Thank you, Mark. Madam President, distinguished faculty, honored guests in the class of 2013. As a Hartwood College alumna and chair of the board, it is my esteem privilege to welcome you on behalf of the trustees of the college. The board is comprised of 27 individuals, alumni, past and present, parents, and friends of the college. For many of us, it has been decades since we first set foot on Orion Yarn Hill. Yet we continue to support and believe in the Hartwick experience. And so collectively, we are honored to act as guardians of the long tradition of an independent, liberal, and experiential college education. Congratulations, graduates, on all your accomplishments. Enjoy this day, for it is yours. Please allow me now to introduce Dr. Reed Golden, Professor of Sociology and Faculty Chair. Abraham Kellogg was a charter member of the Hartwick College Board of Trustees, which he chaired from 1929 to 1944. During the difficult depression years of the 1930s, Kellogg played a major part in the financial survival of the college. His estate gift of $11 million was among the largest gifts that Hartwood College has ever received. Kellogg, a famous state Supreme Court justice, believes that oratorial skills are an important part of a liberal arts education. He established the Abraham L. Kellogg Oratorial Prize to recognize the outstanding oratoric, oratorical presentation by a graduating senior. The faculty selects the winner of this award from among the winner, the winner of this award from among the four students who spoke at baccalaureate last night. I must say that um, during my tenure as faculty chair, the ballot was the closest I've ever seen. All four speakers should be proud of themselves. On behalf of the faculty, it is my pleasure to present this prize to Alona Vanderbilt.
This is a day for honoring the students who have completed their courses of study on Oyaran Hill. But to honor students is also to honor their teachers. The Margaret B. Bunn Award for Excellence in Teaching reminds us to turn our attention for a moment to the faculty who are at the heart of the college. We will focus today on one very special faculty member, but we will be, in fact, recognizing a very special faculty. Margaret Brigham Bunn was for many years a loyal friend of Hartwick who understood the centrality of the interaction between teacher and student. She served as a trustee for the college for 14 years. When she died in 1978, her colleagues on the board established this award which consists of a monetary award presented annually to a member of the faculty judged by students who graduated five years earlier to have been the most outstanding faculty member under whom they studied. The class of 2013 will have their opportunity to make this choice in 2018. The list of current faculty members who are holders of this most prestigious award is a roll call of remarkable teachers. Goldman, Brzenk, Clemens, O'Donnell, Wallace, Malone, Anderson, Strano, Jenkins, Sessions, <laughs> Cody, Hamilton, Huntington, Sears, Eyre, Dalton, Elder, Allen, Navarrete, Young, and Davies. These are the names that Hartwick graduates will remember for the rest of their lives. This year we add a new name to that list, and that name is Dr. Doug Zulo. <laughs> Doug, please come forward. Let me tell you a little bit about Dr. Doug Zulo. Doug arrived at Hartwick in 2005 as assistant professor of art history. He received his BA in history of art from Baldwin Wallace College and both an MA and a PhD 
in history of art from the Ohio State University. <laughs> Doug stood successfully for tenure and was promoted to associate professor in 2011. Doug teaches the broad span of art history, including Buddhist art, world cinema, and photography, but he specializes in modern European art. Doug uses mystery slides to stimulate student discussion. Mystery slides are images not included in any of the textbooks for a particular course, yet the students must identify what the images represent without doing any research based on the information they've learned during the course. Contemporary art, one of Doug's specialties, can provoke controversy. Doug particularly values classroom discussions, and I quote, in which nearly every student participates and in which students disagree with one another in a civilized manner that keeps momentum going, end quote. Good discussion about art may lead to public action. Students in Doug's contemporary art history class discover that Joseph Boys in his 7,000 Oaks project in the 1980s meant for his original planting of 7,000 trees and stones in Germany to be carried out on a global scale. These students were so moved that they decided to add to this public art project by planting an oak and a monolith on the Hartwick campus. The first, and perhaps still the only place in the world where the project has been initiated and carried out entirely by students. It is such inspiring teaching that has earned Doug this award. Please join me again in, in congratulating Dr. Doug Zulo, Associate Professor of Art History. I now ask Dr. Deepak Chopra to please join me at the front of the stage. <laughs> Doctor, visionary, prolific author, and global advocate for human empowerment, Deepak Chopra, today the Hartwick College community gathers to honor you for your service to humanity through the sharing of your personal gifts. Your visionary commitment to study and to promote to the promotion of mind-body health connection has had an immeasurable impact on persons across the world. The lives of individuals who needed the aid of your advice and inspiration have been changed for good because of your personal efforts. A trained physician, you explored the traditions of many cultures to develop a holistic and person-centered approach to health. Few physicians can match the depth and breadth of your influence on the welfare of millions. A prolific author, your writings are eagerly anticipated and have won critical acclaim. Your over 70 books include 21 New York Times bestsellers on a variety of contemporary and relevant topics. This is a testament to your ability to affect a powerful connection with your readers. Through your writings, you offer insight into the human condition. You provide pathways to mental, spiritual, and physical health, and you challenge us to sharpen our collective sense of responsibility as we engage with our world. The world's workers benefit from your wisdom and your guidance as you educate about the benefits of work-life balance, family, and community. You lead through your advocacy of transparency and ethical behavior in business and society. Deepak Chopra, you are an inspiration for all who strive to advance the human spirit. You are a catalyst for those who strive to understand the totality of their life. 
You are a leader for those who work for peace. You are an example of the power of one, of how a single person can motivate change in the life course of an individual or a far-reaching community. Will Trustee Paul Johnson please step forward? Deepak Chopra, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the trustees of Hartwick College, as delegated to them by the state of New York, I am proud to award to you this day the Hartwick College Honorary Degree Doctor of Science with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities thereunto appertaining. Congratulations, Dr. Chopra. I now ask Karen Elting, beloved spouse of James J. Elting, to please join me at the front of the stage. <laughs> Gifted doctor, generous philanthropist, steadfast friend, and loyal guardian of Hartwick College, Today, our community gathers to honor Dr. James J. Elting for his service to the college, the community, and to the medical and healing professions. As chief of the Department of Orthopedic Surgery at A.O. Fox Hospital, founder of Otsego Orthopedics, and later a proud member of Bassett Healthcare, Jim improved the physical function of countless citizens of this region. Jim's patients were people first and his principal concern was helping them to achieve their personal goals. His skill as an orthopedic surgeon, complemented by a deep and abiding sense of empathy, made Jim Elting a respected healer. He was a generous man whose world encompassed all who could benefit from his skills and positive attitude. Jim traveled and taught surgical techniques throughout the US, Europe, and Asia. In 1977, he spent a month working in Kabul, Af Afghanistan, and in 1985, accompanied by his wife, Karen, he went to Peshawar, Pakistan, where he cared for refugees displaced by war. He published papers on surgical techniques and orthopedic ailments in national journals and held several patents for total hip design. He was a teacher throughout his life. His passion for others grew from his optimism about the world around him. Jim Elting pursued challenge. A fervent amateur athlete, Jim appro approached rather sport humbly and with relentless enthusiasm, seeing sport as a vehicle for health, personal growth, and social connectivity. A staunch supporter of Hartwick College athletics, Jim could be found on the sidelines urging teams to victory and in the trainer's room tending to injury. He made athletes stronger through his direct intervention and by providing opportunity for self-improvement. It is no surprise that the College Fitness Center, home to athletic conditioning, bears his name. Jim Elting loved Hartwick. A tireless and faithful supporter of the college for nearly 40 years, Jim was a member of the John Christopher Hartwick Volunteer Program. He served on the college's board of trustees, 
for 21 years and was elected chair of the board in 2009. As Jim always did, he embraced that role with energy and dedication until the time of his death in 2012. Jim understood the transformative power of the Hartwick education. He embodied the mission, ever more curious, ever more creative, a tireless leader. Today, countless members of the Hartwick community celebrate the memory of Jim Elting. We join his family, beloved partner Karen, daughters Kimberly, Laird, and Reagan, and sons Clay and Will in rejoicing that we had Jim in our lives. Will Board Chair Hettinger please step forward? Karen Elting, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the trustees of Hartwick College, as delegated to them by the state of New York, I am proud to award James J. Elting the Hartwick College Honorary Degree, Doctor of Science, posthumously with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities thereunto appertaining. I now ask Judy Jick Brick Friedman to please join me at the front of the stage. <laughs> Educator, artist, philanthropist, devoted friend of Hartwick College, Judy Brick Friedman. Today, our community gathers to honor you, to honor you for your service to the college and for your devotion to helping others in the search of well-being. From your days studying and singing at Brown to your exceptional support of scholarship here on Oyaran Hill, you have demonstrated your vision for good that results from learning and the expression in the creative and performance arts. You have repeatedly demonstrated your ability to effectively bridge cultures in order to advance personal health. As the founder of the first major yoga studio in New York City, you were the first president of the Iyengar Yoga Association of Greater New York. For more than 30 years, you have made manifest the mental, spiritual, and physical benefits of this discipline through your students. A teacher by training and by nature, you now mentor another generation of inspirational teachers of this discipline. Your ability to translate your passions for art and beauty and health reach beyond the useful lessons found in the practice of yoga you own and operate Charlotte Valley Farms, one of the largest certified organic farms in the Northeast. A nationally competitive rider in the Paso Fino Horse Association, you have built upon your love of horses by becoming a devoted student of how indigenous cultures around the world celebrate their equine companions with finely woven textiles and accessories. You now share your knowledge of and appreciation for this history, culture, art, and beauty with others through your renowned collection of horse trappings. You combine your eagerness to learn and to educate with inspiring generosity. 
With Alan Friedman, you initiated and endowed the Young Artist Sponsor Program at the Glimmerglass Opera, a scholarship benefiting more than 30 young opera singers per year. Your deep understanding of the power of transformative learning is demonstrated by your long-standing support of the students and faculty of Hartwick College. You have been a generous supporter of the Hartwick College Geophysical Laboratory. With Alan, you established the Friedman Prize at Hartwick College, funding innovative interdisciplinary research and creative projects by more than 60 students over the last 12 years. Your commitment to scholarship at Hartwick College is unmatched. As Friedman Prize winning students in cognitive science, natural and physical science, and theater arts can attest. Your generosity has inspired a generation of students and the entire Hartwick community of scholars. Will Professor Laurel Elder please step forward? <laughs> Judith Brick Friedman, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the trustees of Hartwick College, as delegated to them by the state of New York, I am proud to award to you this day the Hartwick College Honorary Degree Doctor of Letters with all of the rights, privileges, and responsibilities thereunto appertaining. As noted in the awarding of his honorary degree, Deepak Chopra is a man of great intellect and remarkable ability. During his career, he has leveraged his talent to the benefit of millions. We are fortunate that he has agreed today to deliver our commencement address. I am pleased to introduce to you Dr. Deepak Chopra. President Margaret Dragovich, trustees of Hartwick College, guests, teachers, faculty members, parents, and most importantly, the students, the class of 2013. It is to you that I will address my remarks. Dear graduating class, today, as you celebrate this major milestone in your life, and commence a new stage of your life journey, I ask you to reflect on the gift of life itself. And life in essence is nothing but awareness. Furthermore, human life, considered the pinnacle of biological evolution, is not just awareness, but self-awareness. Amongst creatures on this planet, we human beings are not only aware, we have the capacity to be aware that we are aware, to be conscious of our own consciousness. And in that self-awareness lies our potential and our power to direct our own future evolution and the future evolution of civilization. Biological evolution has been summed up in the phrase survival of the fittest, but with, but with overpopulation 
and overconsumption of resources, the future belongs to survival of the wisest. It is imperative for the future of humanity that wisdom become the new criterion for life on this planet, wisdom become the new criterion for fitness, for sustainable life on this planet, and that wisdom become the knowledge that nurtures life in all its dimensions, not only for us, but for the generations that follow us, the generations that follow Generation Y as well. Today's age is frequently referred to as the information age. The hallmarks of this age are the gifts of science and technology that have created the miracles of molecular medicine, real-time imaging of cellular function, instant accessibility to global knowledge and social networks. Yet, despite this global emerging Yet, despite this emerging global brain, paradoxically, we are beset with the same scourges of war and terrorism, of radical poverty in 50% of the world's population, irreversible climate change, along with deepening social and economic injustice. Furthermore, humanity suffers from massive malnutrition, in which half the world suffers from hunger and the other half from obesity, leading to inflammatory disorders, increased risk of cardiovascular diseases and many types of cancer, while the hungry die from compromised immune function and infectious diseases. The information revolution has not led to the wisdom needed to solve our world crisis in health and well-being. If ever humanity had the power of mass self-extinction on planet Earth, it is today. And if it happens, it will be because we allowed our emotional and spiritual evolution to be outpaced by the evolution of our science and technology. Nuclear pro proliferation biological warfare, eco-destruction, the extinction of species, and the poisoning of our atmosphere, of our rivers and waters, and the very food that sustains our life, and all life, loom as imminent threats. But just as in other critical phases of transformation, while there is disaster looming on the one hand, there is the other hand, there is, on the other hand, the potential to create a radical reorganization into something much greater than was ever conceived of before. Today, I ask you, my young friends, you who are the future hope for humanity, you who represent the future leadership, I ask you what Mahatma Gandhi once asked. Can you be the change you want to see in the world? In fact, there can be no social or world transformation unless there is your own inner transformation. Today I ask you to face a fundamental truth. Today I ask you to consider that there is no you that is separate from the world. The gift of life your own self-consciousness is your key to inner transformation and wisdom. And that, in turn, is how you will transform the world. Today, I ask you to acknowledge that you are the world and that your transformation of consciousness will be the future of the world. This self-transformation is the wisdom that we need for our planet's survival. As I enter the autumn of my life and you the springtime of yours, I want to leave you with seven skills in self-awareness that I have learned that I hope will serve you no matter what profession you choose, 
no matter where your life and destiny takes you as the future leaders of humanity. Skill number one, become the best listener you can be. Learn to listen with the instruments of the body, the feelings of the heart, the logic of the mind, and the stillness of your soul. As you listen deeply, reflect on the following questions. What am I observing? What am I feeling? What is the need of this moment? And what is the best way to fulfill this need? Two, bond emotionally with friends, professional colleagues, and those you interact with daily. Understand that each of us is a part of the web of relationships that is nurtured through love, kindness, compassion, empathy, and joy. Emotional bonds create effective teamwork. Emotional bonds create effective teamwork where nothing is impossible because you have a shared vision for service, contribution, and success, and because you complement each other's strengths and talents. Skill number three, expand your awareness by knowing that all human beings have a hierarchy of needs that start with survival and safety and progressively expand through stages that include love and belonging, true self-esteem, success as in the pro progressive realization of worthy goals, creative expression, higher consciousness, and self-actualization. As you expand your awareness, learn to harness your spiritual gifts that come in the powers of intention, intuition, creativity, imagination, and conscious choice making. Four, remember the importance of action. Learn to be action oriented and know that there is no power higher than love in action. Remember that love without action is meaningless and action without love is irrelevant. Five, assume responsibility for your own well-being in all its various facets. Your well-being encompasses every aspect of your life, your career, your social interactions, your personal relationships, your community, and your financial success. Take time to rest and play, to be with your family and friends, to exercise and nourish your body with healthy food. Skill number six, empower yourself with true self-esteem. Learn to be independent of the good and the bad opinions of others. Recognize the power of your presence alone. Do not allow yourself to be distracted. Know your life purpose and the contribution you want to make to society. And finally, skill number seven, know your true self. Your true self is not your self-image that is dependent on the labels you and others have given yourself. Your true self is the innermost core of your being that is beyond all labels, definitions, and limitations. All the wisdom traditions of the world tell us that the human spirit is a field of infinite possibilities, a field of infinite creativity, of infinite love, joy, compassion, and profound equanimity. No, you can only give to the world that which you possess in the innermost core of your own being. Remember that you will create peace only when you are peaceful and that you will create a loving world only when you have learned to love. I entreat you today not to lose your idealism with the passage of years. That idealism is connected to your knowingness of the good that can be created 
and the power to manifest it. In you lies the potential for a more peaceful, just, sustainable, healthier, and happier world. I'm reminded today of an assignment that John Lennon was given by his elementary school teacher when he was seven years old. He and his classmates were asked to write a short description of whom they wanted to be when they grew up. John Lennon wrote down that he wanted to be always happy. When his teacher complained that John Lennon did not understand the assignment, John's mother told him to tell the teacher that he did not understand life. <laughs> but what do we really know about happiness? Recently, there's been a lot of research on the dynamics of happiness. Most people think that if they are successful in achieving their goals or have good relationships or if they are healthy, they will be happy. In fact, it is the other way around. If you are a happy person, you are likely to have healthy habits and nurturing relationships and great success in life. Social scientists today describe what they call the happiness formula. And here's my opportunity to give you today the happiness formula. The happiness formula is H is equal to S plus C plus V. H stands for happiness. S stands for set point in the brain. C stands for conditions of living and V stands for voluntary choices. S stands for the set point in the brain and refers to our mechanisms of perception. We all have a semi-fixed place on the happiness spectrum based on our outlook of life. Happier people see opportunities where unhappy people see problems. Happier people have a set point for happiness that is constantly upregulated or shifted toward greater happiness through self-reflection on their limiting beliefs. The set point determines 50% of our happiness experience on a daily basis. The C in the formula is the conditions of living and refers mainly to material success and personal wealth. It determines about 12% of your daily happiness experience. If you win the lottery, you will be extremely happy for a few months, but after one year, you will return to your set point. Voluntary choices represents the third part of the happiness formula. These are choices that you make on a daily basis. Choices for personal pleasure bring transient happiness, while selfless choices bring inner fulfillment through purpose and meaning, and by making other people happy. Meaningful relationships bring more permanent happiness than any other thing. So to be happy, it is fine to have material comforts around you, but that will only account, remember, for 12% of your happiness experience. To really be happy, you need to expand awareness and overcome your self-limiting beliefs and then choose selfless actions or ways to be of service and to make others happy. This leads to true and lasting happiness and wisdom. Finally, today, more than on any other day, remember to be grateful. Gratitude will open the door to you for abundance consciousness. Express your gratitude today, particularly to your parents, to your teachers, and to your fellow students, all of whom have helped bring you to this threshold of life. 
you are now ready to embark on the hero's journey, the hero's quest. Good luck and Godspeed. Just know you're not alone Cause I'm gonna make this place your home The trouble it might drag you down you get lost, you can always be found. Just know you're not alone. Make this place your home. Oh, 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 Find my way, 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 find my way
Just know you're not alone Cause I'm gonna make this place your We now come to the central moment of this ceremony. We will now confer degree, officially confer degrees on the class of 2013, and each graduate will be recognized individually. As each member of the class progresses from student to graduate, he or she will be greeted by President Drogovich and invested with Hartwick's undergraduate hood by faculty chair, Dr. Reed Golden. As each, of, as each student descends the ramp, please pause so that you can be presented with a gift from Senior Director of Donor and Alumni Relations, Alicia Fish, who will present you with a replica of the Hartwick Bell, symbolizing your new membership in the Hartwick College Alumni Association. Please hold your bell, refrain from ringing it, and await the official ceremonial first ringing by the entire class of 2013. Will the candidates for the degree Bachelor of Science please rise? President Drogovich, the faculty, staff, and I are honored to present to you these candidates for the degree Bachelor of Science. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the trustees of Hartwick College, as delegated to them by the State of New York, I am pleased to award you, upon completion of your course of study, the degree Bachelor of Science. I now call upon the class marshals to bring forward the candidates for the degree Bachelor of Science. As they come forward, we invite the audience to celebrate the achievements of each graduate but please remember we have many students participating in today's ceremony and each of them has worked very hard to hear their names. Will the marshals please bring the candidates forward. Demetrius Adratus. Mercy Akumu Alila, magna cum laude. Alana Marie Renault Barrera, magna cum laude. Sarah Danielle Baum. Erin Marion Bell. <laughs> T. 
Tyler William Benjamin. Samantha C. Boyce, cum laude. Cleon Andrew Brown. Trevor Hugh Callahan, cum laude. Sean Michael Carpenter, magna cum laude, college honors. Melissa Suzanne Carter. Edward Thomas Siambra III. Matthew Paul Connell. Lauren Alexis Chiris. Brianna Elizabeth Eckert. Christina L. Eliason. Lindsay Elizabeth Frawley, two degrees, magna cum laude, college honors. Sasha Michelle Freeborn. Emily Ann Gates, cum laude. Kyle Lawrence Greeley. Jesse T. Grimm. Jocelyn Page Hartshorn, cum laude. Lauren Ann Hyman, two degrees. Taylor L. Hellstrom. Abigail Marie Huffy, magna cum laude. Jody Marie Hotalen. Sean Benjamin Hoyt. Mujib Ibrahim. Cassandra Lee Jonitis, cum laude. David L. Juster. Leanne Denise Keeley, summa cum laude, college honors. Caitlin Ann Kelly. Lisa Michelle Kettenen. Kelsey Ruth Kimball. Allison Christine Kosich. Aaron J. Lang. Bree Nicole Levesque, magna cum laude.
Brittany Carissa Lintner. Sarah May McDougall. Rebecca Jennifer Maltzman. Lily Martinez. Philip Taggart Machina. Shelby Lynn McEntee, cum laude. Josephine Ewuna Dema. Francis Anna Nisi. Kellyanne Newman. Mikhail John O'Loughlin. Dana Marie Paganico. Anthony Charles Ponesi, two degrees. Olivia Rose Quinn, cum laude. Nelson Angel Ruiz. James Sanders. Sierra Elizabeth Schultz, cum laude. Brian James Schweitzer, cum laude. Mackenzie Marie Shipley, summa cum laude, college honors. Erin Rose Sprague. Megan Ann Sullivan. Lysandra Tetro. Jared Saul Tolan. Samuel Justin Tolan. Alan Edward Turner, summa cum laude. Brittany Lynn Tyrell. Alona Joy Vanderven. Alex Elizabeth Willie. Kirsten L. Wood. Jackie Zhao. Please help me congratulate the class of 2013 Bachelor of Science recipients.
Will the candidates for the degree Bachelor of Arts please rise? President Drogovich, the faculty, staff, and I are honored to present to you these candidates for the degree Bachelor of Arts. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the trustees of Hartwick College, as delegated to them by the State of New York, I am pleased to award to you, upon completion of your course of study, the degree Bachelor of Arts. Will the class marshals please bring forward the candidates for the degree Bachelor of Arts. Again, we invite the audience to celebrate the achievements of each graduate but please remember we have many students participating in today's ceremony and each of them deserves to have their name heard. Danielle Lynn Alisi, Cum Laude, College Owners. Keir Harrison Alexander. Tyler Paul Bailey, Cum Laude. Amanda Lee Baker, cum laude. Caitlin Lee Baker, you has. Magna cum laude. Elliot Ian Balaban. Brian Allen Bassett. Brandon Joseph Batch. <laughs> Olivia Baum. <laughs> Alyssa Brooke Becker, <laughs> cum laude. <laughs> Emily Rose Becker. Kate Mary Vidal, cum laude. Scott W. Beresford. Emily Elizabeth Bergen. Stephen Andrew Bishop, magna cum laude. Adam Gerald Blafari, magna cum laude. Sarah Elizabeth Bliss, cum laude, college honors. Anna Beatrice Boardman, cum laude. Laura Denison Boissy. Cicely R. Bonacci. Robert Farrell Borkowski. John William Byron.
Megan Lee Campbell. Fawn Christine Caplandes, cum laude. Kaniqua Ethel Carlton. Joan Angela Carragal. Julia Cassess Valentin. Julie. That's Julie, I'm sorry. Robert Daniel Cassidy. Justin Raphael Chairs. Megan Alexandra Clampett, two degrees, magna cum laude. Catherine Isabel Classe. <laughs> Kelly Michelle Cleaver. <laughs> Caitlin Elizabeth Collins Hall, two degrees. Haley Noel Cooney, cum laude, college honors. You guys in the right order. Jake Walker Cooper. <laughs> Max William Cooper. Haley Michelle Cox, cum laude, college honors. Caitlin Elizabeth Crowther, cum laude. Cody Dean Cupid, cum laude. Nicole Marie Daniels, cum laude, college honors. Jennifer Eden Davis, cum laude. Marie Kathleen Davison. Gary H. Deal LaRota. <laughs> William Madison DeSurce, cum laude. Alice Ada Denny. James J. DeRosa, Jr. <laughs> Zoe Elizabeth Donahue. Erin <laughs> Elizabeth Doyle. Alexandra B. Drace, summa cum laude. William Charles Dudko. Saeed A. Dukes. Peter Franklin Dumas.
Daniel David Dunn. Irvin's Rochelle Dupuis. Sarah Dempsey Epic. Alyssa Chantel Faley, magna cum laude. Kelly Ray Faiton, summa cum laude, college honors. Shannon Barry Foley, cum laude. Alexandra Mary Forst, cum laude. Danielle Amber Freeland. Samantha Christian Fusco. Jonathan Garcia Torres. Carrie Anna Gauthier, magna cum laude. Michael J. Giordani, cum laude. Jennifer Lynn Girardin, cum laude. Travis J. Godley. Lauren Jane Gould, magna cum laude, college honors. Kaylee Ann Granger, cum laude. Dustin James Grotto, two degrees. Kyle Abbott Greenberg. Tyler Richard Hall, magna cum laude. Lorena Whitney Harris. Hillary Jordan Hayen, summa cum laude, college honors. Jacqueline Kelly Hayward, magna cum laude, college honors. Liam Dennison Highland, cum laude, college honors. Corey James Helfrick. Sarah Ann Herlick, cum laude. <laughs> Natasha Evelise Hernandez. <laughs> Valerie Marie Herz. Justin Dean Jamal Hinton. Erin Jane Holiday, cum laude. Thomas Scott Holmgren, two degrees, cum laude. Justin Hood. Harry Hughes. (laughs) 
Ashley Rose Hunt, two degrees, magna cum laude, college honors. Randy Danielle Huppert, cum laude. Hope Ellen Irian, summa cum laude, college honors. Michael Walter Itkin. Peter Francis Jackson. Diana Christine Jacobson. Coleman Jenis. Robert Michael Kane, two degrees. Kara Marie Cavanaugh. Emily Elizabeth Keeney. Jason Patrick Keith, cum laude. Shazad A. Khan. Kenneth L. Cleso. Emily Case Knapp, cum laude. Danielle Nicole Koenig. <laughs> Stephanie Marie Kroll, cum laude, college honors. Jenna Marie Kurtz, cum laude. Laura Han Kuzma. Leah Jean Labrie. Sabrina Maria Lawrence. Natasha Epiphania Lees. Carl Henry Lingle Jr. Patrick Robert Leone. Cassidy Ryan Liebman. Emily O'Leary Lisborg, cum laude. Megan Irene Lovelace, magna cum laude, college honors. Elizabeth Audrey Lummy. Robert G. Lyons, Jr. Rohit K. Madan. Cassidy L. Martin. Courtney Jenny Martindale. Jesse M. Martino. Maria Teresa Mastriani. Summa cum laude, college honors.
Amanda Jane Matson. Nicholas Paul Mazone. Sierra Marie McCabe. Andrew Patrick McCarthy. Shannon Elizabeth McGee. Ryan Elizabeth McGovern. Mary Courtney McGowan. Rachel E. McHale, Magna Cum Laude College Honors. Megan Shea McIntyre. Megan Fairfax McKeon. Morgan McLaughlin, Cum Laude. Caitlin May McLean. Joshua Buenviaje McNorton. Elizabeth L. Meyer, cum laude. Lauren Elizabeth Michaels. Andrew Lloyd Miller. <laughs> Leah Sosi Moradian. <laughs> Ryan Michael Moore. Rihanna Kyle Morgan. Catherine Elizabeth Jean Mumpton. Alyssa Beth Napilitano. Sarah Grace Napolitano. Marcelo A. Navarro Paras. Danielle E. Nellis. Erin Leah Niblick, two degrees. Magna Cum Laude College Honors. <laughs> Sheila Marie Nigella, Cum Laude. <laughs> Alex J. O'Brien. Tara Christine O'Connor. <laughs> Oluwakemi Abike Omotosho. <laughs> Russell Alexander Os Levinsa. Kate Ann O'Shea. <laughs> Ashley Lauren Pachika.
Kristen A. Pellucci. Kaylee M. M. Pastor, summa cum laude, college honors. Jacqueline Skye Patterson, magna cum laude, college honors. Joseph W. Pellegrino, Jr. Serena Rain Peterson. <laughs> Stephanie Christiane Gabriela Peach. Cum laude, I'm sorry. Teresa Dorothy Sabina Peach, cum laude. Carly A. Pine, magna cum laude. Christina Ann Piscatella. Megan Lynn Pollock. Joseph William Michael Porto. Davion Price. <laughs> Nevin Lightfoot Price Meter. <laughs> Eleanor Rose Prisco, summa cum laude, college honors. Daniel Delius Raley the third. Danielle Caitlin Reed. Kevin James Reese Jr. Caitlin Elizabeth Raymond. Brittany Elizabeth Rice. Frederick Lewis Richmond. Catherine Seaton Riffle. Mariah Brandy Rivera. Leah Grace Roberts, cum laude. Robert James Roth. Alexa Lena Ala Sarkis. Rejoice Emma Sherry Summa Cum Laude College Honors. Lyden William Schultz. Rachel Lynn Schwartzman. Andrew William Charles Schwartz, cum laude.
Natalie Seaborn. Charles B. Seaman. Michael James Sieber. Kendra Ida Shadina, cum laude. Martina Yoshiko Shorky, cum laude, college honors. Mark Ernest Smith. Samuel Stephen Smith. Emily Laura Solant. Ethan G. Stott, magna cum laude. John Christian Stack. Taylor Marie Steffens. Rachel Deanna Stein, cum laude. Corbett Robert Storick. John Robert Stulagros, cum laude. Stephen Albert Swanda. <laughs> Megan Elizabeth Sweeney. <laughs> Emily Margaret Thorndike. Grace Ellen Rose Thorstenson, summa cum laude. Jocelyn Christine Thomasman. John Grant Tomlinson. Ryan Patrick Towns and Magna Cum Laude College Honors. Jacqueline Francesca Underwood. Brissa Denise Vokes. Anne Louise Wagner, two degrees summa cum laude. Molly Wilson Wagner. Hannah Kathleen Ward, cum laude college honors. Margaret Richmond Webb. <laughs> Mallory Page Weber. <laughs> Elizabeth May Whedon, summa cum laude, college honors.
Christopher John Wilcox. Brenda Marie Wood. Alfonso Elliott Weiss. Daniela Louise Yozo. Jonathan Michael Zay. Hong Ji Zhu. And Lindsay Ann Zweigenhaf. Ladies and gentlemen, the class of 2013. Please allow me to introduce Caitlin May McLean, Senior Class Scholarship Co-Chair. Congratulations, class of 2013. We're finally here. For me, this journey would not have been possible without my sisters of Alpha Omicron Pi, my loving friends and family, and the dedicated faculty and staff, and some extremely generous individuals that made scholarships possible here. I spent my last four years dedicating a lot of time to the Office of College Advancement. I learned about fundraising, philanthropy, and most of all, people. I stood before you many times teaching you about the class scholarship, and that's why it's important to give. Providing scholarships and philanthropic support of Hartwick are the reasons you've heard most about. But at the beginning of this year, I realized that I probably missed what may be the most important to us, the Hartwick experience. Many of us would not be here today without scholarships. In fact, that was the deciding factor when I chose to come to Hartwick. What that scholarship provided for me was more than an affordable education. It gave me, and many of you, four years at Hartwick with experiences that we would not have had anywhere else. What opportunities did I have at Hartwick that stick out? Small classes, a pride in my college, and the opportunity to gain valuable work experience all helping me to prepare for the real world. But it's things like a lifelong bond with some of my closest friends and a connection to thousands of sisters through AOPI. <laughs> Saturday mornings with make your own pizza in the commons, late night trips to Yellow Deli, and nights on the town with friends that helped me to grow into the person I am today in a much different way. Here I stand full of experience, ready to take on the responsibility of being a Hartwick grad. Life isn't about the destination, it's about the journey. We've all journeyed together for the last four years in a journey that only Hartwick could provide. Today, take some of the time to think about what you've gained from Hartwick and the experience it gave you. Also, take some time to think about the generous donors that have made so many scholarships possible for all of us. My name is Caitlin McLean, and I am proud to be the Senior Class Scholarship Committee Chair. 
Together with a team of students, including fellow graduates Kendra Shadina and Courtney Martindale, we raised a scholarship that will fund and be awarded to an incoming first year student based on financial needs. This scholarship helps to provide the new student with a chance to have the Hartwick experience that we all had. Thank you to all of the generous contributions from graduating seniors, underclassmen, and to several generous parents in our audience today. I'm proud to say that over half the class of the class of 2013 gave to support the class scholarship this year. <laughs> President Dragovich, it is my honor and pleasure to present you with the class of 2013 scholarship. Now, please allow me to introduce Neil Miller, the Hartwick College Alumni Association President. Thank you, thank you, Caitlin. We're almost done. <laughs> I would like to congratulate the class of 2013. I'd like to congratulate the parents of the class of 2013 and the friends who are here today. A quick sidebar of the class of 2013, one of your graduates did not go on the stage today uh, due to the fact that he walked the stage in 1973. He was three credits shy. Uh, a good friend of mine, Ray Flanagan, came back to campus this spring and got his three credits. He took his diploma to his 93-year-old mother in a nursing home and finally presented it to her, the Hartwick degree. Hartwick has given each one of you the foundation of what you are to grow on. As you leave today and work on your career, remember where you came from. Remember what you learned here at Hartwick, the professors you met, the bonds you met with your classmates, and the administration who helped you through this, through this last four years. Again, some of you have done this in three years, most of you in four, and you special people in five. Uh, <laughs> congratulations to the parents on those guys. I challenge you, I challenge your parents, and I challenge your friends as you leave today to go back to your communities and as you grow, be ambassadors of Hartwick College. Tell your friends, tell your, your upcoming students the experiences that you have had here at school and welcome them to your alma mater. At this time, you have a replica that was given to you of the Hartwick Bell. This is made available through donations from friends of Hartwick, alumni, and parents. Take this bell with you, and as time goes by, continue to reflect on Hartwick. If I see this on eBay, I will find you. <laughs> on behalf of the 17,500 alumni, I ask you, the class of 2013, to raise your bells and welcome to the alumni.
Members of the class of 2013, now you leave Hartwick, an educated woman, an educated man. You may have traveled across the world. You may have done a remarkable thing or two. You have probably learned more than you expected and perhaps even more than you thought possible. It is my hope that what you have learned best is how to learn from others. For in truth, no pinnacle moment, this or any other, will be yours alone. This moment also belongs to those who cared for and nurtured you through this day. Those who came to this celebration to be with you, as well as though those though not here today would have wished to have been here, standing by your side. Your mother, your father, your step-parent, sister, brother, grandparents, aunts, uncles, cousins, and others who helped you in your formative years. Whether they taught you how to walk, to read, to swim, to drive, to iron, or to shave, or encouraged you to be brave enough to explore places and ideas heretofore unknown to you, they have helped you to achieve this milestone. Graduates, please stand, turn to face your families, search with your eyes and your hearts for those who have brought you here through their love and devotion. Be seated. Graduates, we have come to know over the centuries that teaching is an honorable profession and that those who commit their life to educating others do so to the benefit of us all. The faculty and staff of Hartwick College have committed themselves to a life of learning. They have committed themselves to sharing this learning with you. It was not their job to teach you technical minutia. No, their task has been to teach you to be curious, to think critically, to reach into that space just beyond your understanding and pull yourself up to the next phase of knowledge. In this way, they have prepared you to create solutions to problems that do not yet exist. In this way, they have prepared you not simply for your first job, but rather for a lifetime of achievement. They have spent countless hours with you in the classroom and in rehearsals, in the field and on the field, in the laboratory, on the stage, and in the studio. They challenged you when you failed to meet a goal. They knew, they knew you could reach that goal. They reassured you when success was elusive. They helped you to develop your sense of confidence and your sense of courage. They helped you to find your authentic voice and they celebrated with you. As they opened a door to new understanding, they set you free. Will the faculty and staff of Hartwick College please rise and face the class of 2013. 
into it. Graduates, please rise. Please rise and face these learned faculty who have taken you to this moment today. Applaud their efforts to you. Will everyone now please rise for the singing of the Hartwood College alma mater, Oyarin Hill of Dreams which will be sung by 2013 graduate Sean M. Carpenter with senior John Tomlinson as conductor. You'll find the words of the alma mater in the back of today's program. Please remain standing for the recessional. Thank you. From the valley through the forest Searching for a clearer vision Came a youthful warrior To O'Yarin Hill of Dreams Like the brave we climb this hillside Seeking truth and understanding While we grow together On O'Yarin Hill of Dreams Nature's radiant seasons frame our years together, sowing grains of inspiration, gleaming sheets of bonding memories. Still draw strength and wisdom from O'Yarin Hill of Dreams.
know which way do we go. Oh, I, I just need to get out and go to Smith.